disposal. The next is to go to the fixed asset. In order to make the job a lot easier for you to understand fixed asset, I start creating a new fixed asset. But very briefly, up to here, whatever we have been discussing in finance series, they were talking about current assets, like the money that is supposed to come to your company or the items that you're selling within your company. These are current assets. But the fixed asset are those equipments, machines, tangible or intangible stuff that your company relies on to do the operation. There are many types of assets that we're going to get into as I create them. But there are two approaches of setting up a fixed asset. One is setting up the asset, fixed asset first, and then creating an asset on top of it, which would be for large implementation. Perhaps you could use the data import and export for it. But in order to really understand it well enough, I do a different approach. I do a top-down approach. I just start creating an asset, and as is needed, I create and set up things that are necessary. As we see for the very first time, the fixed asset list page doesn't show any fixed asset whatsoever because I just made this company. So I start by creating a brand new fixed asset. As soon as I open this up, I just wanted to give you a heads up that from this moment forward for the next 10, 15 minutes, we are going to open up so many different forms from this form. So I do a lots of right click and view detailing in order to explain a few things. So the catch here is if you're following this with me, you need to literally maximize each form and make sure that you're in the right place, right time in order to add a new record. As you can tell, when I create a brand new fixed asset, all of the buttons on the action pane are indeed faded because it is not creating any asset just yet. As soon as I complete this exercise, you see that all of these buttons would indeed become visible and enable. The first property, as you see, is a fixed asset group. So since I don't have any group, I right click on this property and I go to the view details and it opens up a new form. That would be the second form. So I go here and I create a brand new record. Since I'm only going to create one group, I call it a CNC and that would be Seahorse CNC machines. Now you could of course have as many as groups as you like. I take this opportunity and I tell you that you can have as many as groups in order to group your assets appropriately. For example, all your vehicles could be belong to one group. All your machines could belong to another group. All your intellectual properties could be belong to another group, let's say. In each group, which is mandatory field, these are the type of an asset you can deal with. Very quickly, the tangible represents those assets that you can feel and touch. These are tangible assets. Intangible assets are intellectual properties, patents, ideas, copyrights. Then you have financial assets like bonds. Land and buildings is obvious. Goodwill is like something that you get a, a specific asset, but immediately you depreciate a lot out of it. Example would be like perhaps company A buys company B and immediately they let go of so many employees. They close down so many buildings because they just needed the specific value of that company, but they had to buy the whole thing. So that's a goodwill. That means they just pay for the whole lump sum, but then they have to depreciate so many things off of it. Most acquisition companies, they do that. Another thing that you could consider goodwill for would be like a donation. Then it becomes your asset and properties. So you can treat it in any way. And then finally, non-category of asset would be other. That means you don't know which one it is. Later, you can change that type. I start with the tangible because that's the most important one. The other fields would be like major type. This is not important for setting up the fixed asset. This is something for business intelligence and reporting. So if you don't set anything here, it's okay. In my demonstration, I'm not going to set anything up. The major type could be like, is it electric? Is it mechanic? Those type of things for business intelligence. Would you like to have the fixed asset number to be specified manually by you or specified automatically? So I say, you know what? Use the number sequence. And as a matter of fact, use one of the existing number sequences that I have. I think in my sessions, we had created enough number sequences to be acquainted with how to create one. So I'm not going to waste time on that specific topic anymore. Would you like to have a barcode associated for each fixed asset in case you would like to print the barcode and attach it to asset? Example would be like a projector or would be podium in universities, let's say. Chairs, desk, any specific machinery, they may have a license plate or they may have a tag that has a barcode in it. So I happen to use the same number sequence for. There are three types of property. The first one is a fixed asset that we are going to discuss. The second one is a continuing property. Continuing property are those assets that are 